A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered then that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay the next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion, about a certain Jesus who had died, but Paul claimed he was alive. Since I was at loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. Verbum Domini. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength who do his will. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, 
tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to trust yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Before I begin, a couple prayer requests. Father Leonard and I are going to um, a Spanish immersion this next month, so you won't see us around for a while, but to pray that just like at Pentecost, the apostles were able to speak in different languages, that we would be given docility of mind to learn Spanish. And also to pray for those who are newly ordained. So our, our deacon, Dort Big, from Arlington, Virginia, has recently been ordained, but this is a time of many men entering into um, ministry, both in holy order, so to pray for them. And so Jesus Christ, who reveals himself, reveals the Father to us, the Father's love to us. Now in John chapter 21 is revealed to the apostles on the Sea of Galilee. This he said at his resurrection, that he would see them in Galilee. So Peter and others have gone fishing back to this place where they spent so much time with Christ in his ministry. Jesus, as you remember, spent most of the gospel is spent right there on the Lake of Galilee. And so we we hear Jesus saying to Peter, do you love me? And in that, we're reminded also of other words of Christ before his passion. At the Last Supper, he commands them to love one another as he has loved them. Our Lord in John 17 prays that our joy might be full, that we might live in the life of the Trinity by the indwelling of God in our souls. This is the Son who reveals the great love of the Father for us and promises to send the love of God, the Holy Spirit, into our hearts that we too would cry, Abba, Father. This great love we see in the passion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says, I have made known your name, Father, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. So we, having been consecrated, made holy by God, we can truly love one another with the love of Christ, which is within us. Peter, jumping to his letter, he is an apostle of love sent by Christ to the flock of God. He got the message. So he says to us in, in the first chapter of his letter, his first letter, having purified your souls by obedience to the truth for a sincere love of the brethren, love one another earnestly from the heart. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. He tells us in chapter 3 to have unity of spirit, sympathy, 
love of the brethren, a tender heart, and a humble mind. And finally, he passes on that commission that Christ gives to him to tend his sheep, to feed his sheep, to his successors, exhorting them to tend the flock that is your charge, not by constraint, but willingly, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not as domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And certainly we can take this also for, for parents, that they should tend their little flock that God has given them willingly not and eagerly, not domineering, but being examples to their children, to those around them. Jesus loves us with that great love of God and sends that love into our hearts to transform it. He also gives Peter a special share in that tending and feeding of the flock, his lambs and his sheep. And so in every age, we know that Christ has come from God, that he goes to God in the ascension. And we have confidence that he continues to pray for us, that the love he shares with the Father, that Holy Spirit, would be our love. So the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, purifying them, making them sincere and earnest. This is how we know that we truly love Christ. <clears throat>